In most games, we can easily spot content that is stereotypical and racist, but in Left 4 Dead, we have to look at what is not there, as opposed to what is. You can clearly see that the demographic of the four survivors and main characters in the game are three Caucasian characters and an African American. What's plain to see here is the favoritism of the Caucasian race and underrepresentation of minorities. At first glance, you may think that the game tries to make things fair and equal by incorporating an African American man as part of their lineup when in fact, they use him in the game for much of the comic relief and the target of many stereotypical cliches of African Americans. To put things into perspective, we've gathered all the voice clips for each of the characters, and we'll play them for you so you can see how each of the characters react to certain situations compared to Lewis, the only minority in the game. As you are listening to their voices, take note at how boisterous, loud, and crazy that Lewis is compared to his calm counterparts. Guys at the office used to laugh at me when I hit the rifle range at lunch. Ain't so damn funny now, is it? Oh, shit! 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 I... am bad. <laughs> I am bad! Yes, I am! Woo! That's right, we should call ourselves the Unstoppables. Ow! Mother... Whoa, whoa! Don't shoot, it's me! Hey, man, that hurt! Ah, oh, will you knock it off? Do I look like one of them? You know I'd appreciate it if you stopped shooting me! And watch where you shooting! Hey man, that's not cool! Whoa! Jesus! Holy shit! Jesus! Woo! Boom dia! That's some country ass bullshit! <laughs> yeah! Things like this never end well. You think one day it's all just gonna go back to normal? Great. That makes me the last woman on Earth. You're an optimist. I'll give you that, Lewis. Yoink. I can't get over how fast they all are. It's not even fair. I'm calling zombie bullshit on that, you know? <laughs> They're not allowed to be so fast. It's not gonna get any better, you know. Last time I was here, the city wasn't so much on fire. I hate small towns. I hate the water. I hate lawyers. When are they going to get done practicing law? I hate hospitals. And doctors and lawyers and cops. You know what I don't hate? I don't hate vests. Everyone but us is either a zombie or an asshole. Listen, candy pants, we can make you open that goddamn door. Maybe there's no stinking zombies in the sewers. <laughs> Francis, is that you or the sewer? That's a crock of shit. Into the emergency room, people! These woods look thicker than boomer shit. Nobody wander off. Poor bastards barricaded themselves inside the city. All I must have took was one infected. Warning. The following video contains obscene images, sounds, ideals, and music of extreme violence, hatred, and language. Viewer discretion is advised. 
The next game you're about to see is called Border Patrol, and in the game, the objective is to shoot and kill Mexicans trying to cross the border. The subjects you're aiming to stop are depicted in three different stereotypes, a Mexican nationalist, a drug smuggler, and a so-called breeder, which is basically a mother carrying her kids. This disgusting game is available to anyone that has an internet connection and a web browser. It's simple to play, just click anywhere on the screen to shoot. Kids will no doubt find it easy to pick up and will not be able to discern the stereotypes from reality. This violent, vicious, and mentally sick game has been traced to Temecula, California, a town just outside of San Diego known to be one of the most racist regions in the state. January 21st, 2002, a video game called Ethnic Cleansing is released by Resistance Records, an underground music label specializing in neo-Nazi and white supremacist bands. In the game, the player can choose to be a skinhead or a clansman, and has the player running through a ghetto killing black people and Latinos before descending into a subway system to kill Jews. Finally, he reaches the Jewish control center where Ariel Sharon, former Prime Minister of Israel, is directing plans for world domination. The player must kill Sharon to win the game. To add insult to injury, January 21st, 2002 was the third Monday of January, the same day we celebrate Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday.